What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about this man right here, Mr. Jeff Keeley. So, look, I've I've defended him in the past. I've talked, uh, I would say, more positive than negative in terms of the award shows and the presentations, the Summer Game Fest of the world, the Gamescoms of the world. However, I've also been a very, uh, I've I've been very harsh on the guy as well. I think he is somebody that's very connected. I think he can do great uh, things for the industry, and sometimes he doesn't. So I just. Kind Kind of want to start this video off by saying I kind of like I think overall he's a net positive and I do overall respect the guy and again I think what he brings to the table in gaming is is definitely more and outweighs the negatives but I have you know I've had some things to say about some of his shows I want to talk about what's been going on with him uh, not necessarily like in the news or anything but kind of like manufactured I'll be honest primarily on Twitter okay and I want to talk about if he needs to say something and, and what is this all about okay well let's kind of catch you guys up so one thing you don't really need to be caught up on is all the layoffs right so thousands of people and which is I'm not I'm not making light of it I'm just trying to kind of like speed run through it we've talked about it in other videos lots of layoffs AAA is not like gonna completely go away but it is having some severe trouble you know okay we, we all know this right we've seen a lot of this stuff so what we've seen over the past few days, and it really was elevated to a whole new level. Um, I believe it was the Sony day when PlayStation uh, did the 900 employees, right? And Jeff Keighley tweeted about that AI scent device, okay? Now, I kind of laughed it off because I'm like, that's funny. Um, I don't want it. I don't care about it. It's funny he would tweet something about that. I mean, I'm not a, you know, I, I don't really care, I guess. And again, it's not going to change my life. But then I started to see something, right, on social media where a lot of people were saying two different things. Number one, why in God's name is he not saying anything ever? Because people were kind of starting to look into it, and it's like, well, and then I guess the second part, the tweet was kind of ill-timed, right? You're tweeting this kind of like jokingly, but you're kind of promoting it, right? You're promoting this weird AI device, which people are already kind of, you know, AI is a sensitive topic. So you're doing that, but you're also doing that the same day that PlayStation is eliminating all these jobs and everybody's kind of like mourning, you know, on, on social media, right? And he's not saying anything. And then you can take that one step further and say, you know what? He's never actually said anything. And if you think about the Game Awards, right, that happened this past, year what was one very big narrative going into it a lot of people wanted him to stop the show and talk about the layoffs okay now here's the thing I want that's what I'm talking about that's that's what this video is for does he need to say anything and everything regarding that all right my actual answer is pretty short I'll expand upon it you know as this video goes no I my answer does he need to speak up no I think, and this has happened beyond Jeff and beyond gaming, there's some weird like necessity for whatever reason on social media that you have to comment, depending on your personality, depending, I guess, on your size, depending, I guess, on your niche. There's this weird mentality that you need to comment on certain things. Um, it could be politics, and oftentimes it is politics. We're seeing this even with, with a certain conflict, let's say, overseas. For whatever reason, number one, everybody's all of a sudden an expert, right, on foreign conflicts. And, and okay, no, take no offense, right, but that's that's what I'm seeing, right? Not that I, I don't know any. I'm not going to speak on it because I don't think I'm informed enough. And you have a lot of people that are speaking that have no idea what they're talking about. But you also then have people saying... You need to talk about this. You need to step into the arena. You Do you have a political opinion on this year's election? Well, you better because we need to know. You need to say exactly how you're feeling and it better be on the right side or screw you, right? And this is the way, you know, for all sides you know, in, in the world here. It's this really weird thing. Now, I'm getting to, there is a slight truth to Jeff Keighley with this. I want to kind of leave that and, and make you have to watch, you know, the rest of the video because I do think there's an inkling of, I kind of, I see where they're coming from and I do get it, but ultimately I really do stand on my principles and we'll get there. We'll get to what I just said, but I really do stand on my principles that he doesn't have to say anything. I have seen people say, well, what would it do? What would it do? And that's another thing I actually agree with. I think is it is it good if you were to like speak up and say something like yeah I, I think people would say like good job Jeff like you're standing up for the working like I think you'd have that what would it actually do to prevent this absolutely nothing and and you can take that to politics you can take that to any other random example that you can think of it's probably the same answer each time 
Can you speak up on a certain subject? Yes. Do you have to? You shouldn't have to. I, I don't think you should be forced into speaking about anything if you don't want to. You don't have to. This is not. You don't have to be online. You don't have to be around. Uh, and also, online isn't even everything. Online is like some. Sometimes it's it's real, but a lot of times it's just a fictional kind of playground that people play around with, and then they get off. Some people don't get off. They're terminally online. But other people get off, and they live completely different lives to what you would see and believe online. Okay. You don't have to say anything. You're not being held at gunpoint. You're not being, you know what I mean? It's all, it's in that way, it is manufactured force. Because once you log off, these people have nothing on you, I guess, depending on what you do. Someone like me, I can log off. You can't, you know what I mean? Like you can't invade my, I guess you could try, but you can't invade my life. You know what I mean? I will say this, this actually gets to the little bit of, of a part that I do understand where where is Jeff right what's his role this is where it does get I think a little bit more muddy I stand on my principle that he should not by right or by his own rights as a human being he does not need to say a freaking word okay you don't have to say he can feel bad for these people and not say it he can feel bad and say it he can technically not feel bad and say it and he can also not feel bad and not say it all four of those he can do that's completely up to him. Now, again, where it gets muddy, he often, and this is his own fault. This is where I would take serious, again, like, again, I, I can defend him, I can criticize him. He needs to really evaluate what he wants to be for the gaming industry, okay? Because I will agree with people that say, I've seen this a few times, he constantly pushes himself as like an ambassador of you know he's like the, and he really is to be honest with you not only does he say it and push it but he actually and i'll give him credit for this weirdly he acts it he is the front runner he is literally the guy that does this stuff e3 has died you know underneath him now summer game fest is not as big as e3 but like the game awards has taken over the freaking world and he is really like he has monopoly over these events he's got game awards in december he's got summer game fest in june and he's got gamescom in august he's got three events in three different months i mean that is a that is a quarter you know of the entire year is dominated by him and you can yeah there's the dice awards and maybe that's better in terms of actually celebrating the industry but you know what you know who watches that a fraction of the people that watch the game awards he really has the eyes on him and he pushes the industry he like his uh connections his world premieres his world you know these things that he gloats about he'll even joke about it sometimes so where am i going with all this does he have some sort of like like does he have to do it because of what he says he is that's where i could start to see your point you know what i mean that's where i could start to understand where you're coming from because if you want to be somebody that is leading the industry in, in the way he does i'm not saying like he's not out there making triple a or, or indie or any kinds of games right he's leading it in a different kind of way if you're doing that should you speak up when there's and and I will say, like, is it that hard to just tweet? I'm sorry. Like, sorry about the 900p. You know what I mean? He technically, again, he doesn't even have to believe it. <laughs> if, if he wants to lie about it, he can still, you know what I mean? Now, I wonder, and I do actually, like, genuinely wonder this. Why, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he? Now, when people brought up the thing for the Game Awards, I actually agreed with the other side. I actually would take Jeff's back on it, where... You know, I get it. Like, you're celebrating the industry. That's why I would actually, like, he's got to let these people talk longer. I would agree with that part. But to stop the Game Awards where it's a celebration, and this is just where I kind of stand on it. It's a celebration of the industry. To stop it and make it basically a funeral for a few minutes, I get, I get where people are coming from because you're celebrating the people that worked on the games. And so when they are, you know, lashed at and fired, you know, to kind of just throw something their way and say, hey, we feel really bad. I get that. But I also would, would understand why you wouldn't do that. When it's a Game Awards, when it's a lot of positivity, when it's forward momentum, to stop the show for a few minutes, bring the mood to the freaking floor, and say, hey, we're sorry about the 8,000 people that lost their jobs. I, I get it. I get both sides. But I actually do agree with him in that case of not doing that. This is a little bit different because I would actually say it's smaller, right? It's not... It's not as big of a deal to send a tweet saying, sorry, saying, you know, this is a, a sad day for the industry. Xbox laid off 1,900 people. This is a sad day for the industry. Sony laid off 900. 
it's a smaller deal to tweet that than stopping your game award show. You know what I mean? And I think that kind of changes the conversation where, again, it makes kind of both sides this whole, eh, you know, like if he does it, he does it. If he doesn't do it, it you know what I mean? I, I feel like it's almost harder to argue either way because it's like, again, what does a tweet actually do? What would him tweeting it actually do? And at the same time, well, maybe the tweet would do something, but we don't really know. We also don't really know the reasons why he's not doing it. I guess the worst thing that could happen here is if you ever found out, if we ever found out, why he doesn't tweet these things. You know what I mean? If we ever found some sort of phone, you know, phone log or whatever it might be, where, and I guess this is where I'm going with it, if he's like afraid, right, where it's like he can't say anything because he's working with these corporations weekly to set, like they give him these exclusive content to premiere to the world. And if he simply says that he's sorry that people lost their jobs, you might take that and say, oh, he must hate Sony. And then Sony looks at that and says, Jeff, we're done. You're not getting Hideo again. You're not getting Death Stranding. You're not going to show Horizon ever again. You know what I mean? And I mean, like, actually, in some ways, I would get why he would shut his mouth. Because if it's that severe for something so, again, like, what does a tweet actually do? We don't really know. But if that's the consequence for it, you can go two different ways. You can call him a coward or you can say, you know what? He's kind of just being smart. And, and honestly, it for me, maybe it even depends on the day. I really don't. I can see, again, both sides. I can see you saying, well, that's a cowardly move. You know what I mean? Like, he needs to stand up for the people in the industry if he wants to lead the industry he needs to stand up for the people in it i totally get that at the same time if for some reason saying one thing online which would not shock me look at the world we're in you say one thing out of line especially in his situation where he is if he says one thing out of line and i don't you know we don't know this i don't know this i'm speculating but if he says one thing out of line and then say he loses forever the ability to work with Xbox, PlayStation, Square Enix, EA. One bad move, entire rest. And he's like 43, 40. He still has probably a good 10, 15, 20 years left. Those years would be without, say, a single company if he just says one wrong thing. I also would get why you'd shut your mouth. You know what I mean? Like, I absolutely understand that. So, you know, again, I think it's more nuanced. It's, it's, you need to have, I think, these conversations. And I, I think people that tweet, you know, their 200 words on Twitter, you know, I don't really think they're giving him, uh, what is it, 12, 13 minutes that we've talked about it, right? I think this is kind of giving it a little bit of a better look than just like one tweet on Twitter. Again, I, I mean, like the more I think about it, the more I do think back to like, it's, it's the internet. All of this stuff, whether it's for good or for bad, is manufactured. The rage on him or the outrage is literally just created. It's just created. And, and he's in the situation. I will say this, though. He's in the situation where it can follow him home. You know, like I said in the beginning, sometimes you can just turn it off. People could hate you online. People could love you online. You turn it off. You turn around. You go to your family. Maybe you're by yourself, whatever. You play a game. You watch a movie. You go out to eat. You're not part of it doesn't follow you at all you know what I mean I mean I guess it would if you like let it like in your head right like emotionally but I mean you literally can turn it off if you are just the average Joe if you're this guy who every day I'm sure has meetings and phone calls with companies with executives if you're this guy it doesn't exactly go away you say something or you don't say something and that follows, and I, mean, I guess you could argue that him not saying something is saying something. And maybe people are going to remember that. There, there definitely is a lot more anger towards him than ever before. It's slowly been building up. Like the last couple of game awards, he's gotten a lot more, I'd say, hate. Both before the awards happen, the show, and then right after, right? Like two years ago, I noticed he really got hit before. It was mainly like Kotaku and other places, but he was getting hit before the show started started like a couple days before and then after and then this one was even worse this one was like Jeff you better mention the layoffs and then when he didn't mention the layoffs people are like you know people freaked out but you know with this situation and with again people noticing he's not really speaking up about these layoffs every day I kind of sense more and more people now again 
who pe- what people who people you know who what when where why who are these people how many are there actually are they also doing their own thing where hey they say it do they actually mean it i'd like to throw that in you know let's just end the video there these people that are so mad at him that's fine i mean you can be mad at him that's totally understandable you can also be fine with it i don't really care that's why we're having this talk just to kind of hear both sides out but if you hate him or you know and i'm talking about like the industry right these people that are like okay he's done I better not ever see you at his show. I better not ever see you talk, you know, talking about him in a in a positive light or whatever, right? Like put put your money, which is a weird like because it's not necessarily that. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't ever go to the game awards. Don't do it. If you're like a streamer that's been like going after this guy, better not see you coast because you're going to make money off of the coast stream of his shows and yet you hate him so much and you think he's terrible busy but you're you're making money off the guy you think that's okay a lot of these people even the people that are mad and i guess the people that are also backing him a lot of them are double standard individuals right so it's also going to be fun in my it's, it's a fun thing to track who is saying what and will they back it up later on because i guarantee you uh 75% won't people are very wishy-washy that they don't actually follow up what they say or what they think because again it's online it doesn't really matter at the end of the day so let me know what you guys think in the comments make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turned on i hope to see you all on the next one